Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. While many of us associate Bing Crosby with the holiday season, he was more than just a carol singer. As an actor, singer and comedian, he dominated both record sales and the box office. But behind the scenes, his life was defined by heartbreak and scandal. You know him as the man who sang White Christmas and co-starred in a slew of movies with Bob Hope. But what don't you know about Bing Crosby? How was Bing Crosby's real life when the stage lights went off? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The Secret Life of Bing Crosby What would the holidays be like without the dulcet tones of Bing Crosby's voice drifting through the air? whether it be in a department store, at a party, or in the background of a favourite old movie. Bing Crosby was one of the biggest American music and movie stars of the mid-20th century, and his recording of White Christmas is perhaps the best-known holiday pop song of all time. He has gone down in history as one of America's most beloved entertainers, dominating the silver screen, music charts, and infiltrating radios across the country from the 1930s to 1960s, Crosby remains a pop culture icon. Bing Crosby was without doubt the most popular and influential media star of the first half of the 20th century, the undisputed best-selling artist until well into the rock era, with over half a billion records in circulation. The most popular radio star of all time and the biggest box office drawer of the 1940s, Crosby dominated the entertainment world from the Depression until the mid-50s and proved just as influential as he was popular. To most Americans, he was the eternal crooner, a much celebrated and beloved performer of unparalleled popularity. Yet Bing Crosby was far more than that. He was an architect of 20th century entertainment, a force in the development of three industries that barely existed when he came into the world – recordings, motion pictures and broadcasting. As the most successful recording artist of all time, an abiding star of movies, radio and television, and a firm believer in the wonders of technology, he helped to transform and define the cultural life not only of the United States but of the world. Yet despite all his success that followed, Crosby's personal life was filled with hardship. The public saw him as the A-list golden boy who topped the musical charts with nearly 300 hit singles throughout his career, yet the notoriously private celeb's life was, at times, in a shambles. Bing Crosby was born Harry Lillis Crosby in Tacoma, Washington on May 3, 1903, but moved to Spokane, Washington at the age of three. He was the fourth of seven children of Catherine Helen Kate Harrigan and Harry Lowe Crosby, a brewery bookkeeper. He was of English and Irish descent. With the move to Spokane came the purchase of a revolutionary device, the phonograph. Crosby loved playing music on the phonograph, especially the work of Al Jolson. Crosby earned his famous nickname around the age of seven, Bing, comes from a comic strip he adored, the Bingville Bugle. In 1910, a neighbour began calling him Bingo from Bingville. The nickname, after dropping the last vowel, became his name for the rest of his life. For his education, Crosby attended Catholic school, reflecting his mother's deep devotion to her faith. He went to Gonzaga High School, which was run by Jesuits. While attending Gonzaga University, Crosby abandoned his aspirations to become a lawyer for his dreams of musical stardom. While studying at Gonzaga, Bing started to play drums, and in 1921 he and his high school friends formed a group called the Musicaladas. The band was quite successful at a local level, but they mostly played at dances and private parties. In the summer of 1917, he worked as a property boy at the Spokane's Auditorium, where he watched several acts which fascinated him. His songwriting activities, including part authorship of A Ghost of a Chance and Where the Blue of the Night, his radio theme song. In the 1940s, he was the star of a popular radio variety show. He was ready to stick with the music business. Crosby had made quite a bit of money during the band's career, and he and Rinker, who was the brother of Mildred Bailey, 
were confident they could make it in California. They packed up their belongings and headed out for Los Angeles, finding good money and working in vaudeville until they were hired by Paul Whiteman, leader of the most popular jazz band in the country and known as the King of Jazz, in an era when black pioneers were mostly ignored since they were unmarketable. Crosby became a star after getting his own program on the CBS radio station in New York City in 1932. He began appearing in more films, and by the late 1930s his records were selling millions of copies. For a few songs during Whiteman's shows, Rinker and Crosby sang as the Rhythm Boys with Harry Barris. With their clever songwriting and stage routines, the trio soon became one of the Paul Whiteman Orchestra's most popular attractions, and Crosby took a vocal on one of Whiteman's biggest hits of 1927 and 1928, Old Man River. Besides appearing on record with Whiteman's orchestra, the Rhythm Boys also recorded on their own, though an opportunity for Crosby to enlarge his part in the 1930 film King of Jazz, with a solo song, went unrealised, as he sat in the clink for a drunk driving altercation. Together with friend Al Rinker, Crosby wanted to break into showbiz, and the duo actually landed some gigs. Their future looked promising. However, it soon became obvious that Bing Crosby, who had a unique voice, was born to shine as a solo singer. Unlike the many vocal artists before him, Crosby grew up with radio, and his intimate bedside manner was a style perfectly suited to emphasise the strengths of a medium transmitted directly into the home. It was also helped by the emerging microphone technology. Scientists had perfected the electrically amplified recording process only a few months before Crosby debuted on record, and in contrast to earlier vocalists, who were forced to strain their voices into the upper register to make an impression on mechanically recorded tracks, Crosby's warm, manly baritone crooned contentedly without a thought of excess. But behind all the glamour and success, Crosby had his own set of challenges. In 1931, he signed a solo recording contract with Max Sennett. That same year, Crosby was given a contract with CBS and got his major breakthrough with a weekly 15-minute radio broadcast, where he sang several songs that immediately hit the charts. Nevertheless, Crosby's fantastic records and radio work made a huge impact. By 1930, he scored his first film role in King of Jazz, and shortly after launched his own radio show, one which attracted as many as 50 million listeners during its peak. In 1932, he got his first film role and embarked on his journey to being a full-fledged national star. Through hard work and raw talent, Crosby would become one of the most appreciated entertainers in American history. Certain polls declared him the most admired man alive. It wasn't easy to reach the top of the entertainment industry during the 30s. Many crooners were jostling for contention. And as Bing expressed it himself, Frank, Frank Sinatra, is a singer who comes along once in a lifetime, but why did he have to come in mine? There may have been more to the bigger-than-life friendship between Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra than just broads and tossing back the booze. Like Sinatra, Crosby had a thing for mobsters. New FBI evidence paints a disturbing picture of somebody who appeared the angelic G-rated family man, but who lived in a sleazy netherworld of corruption when the stage lights went off. FBI documents which show the Hollywood legend was a serial gambler, sometimes forced to pay money to connected friends. He combined high-profile glittering nights with pals like Dorothy L'Amour, Bob Hope and Mel Torme with illicit payoffs and gambling tours after dark. Considered America's most cherished entertainer for his rendition of White Christmas and turn as a kindly priest in The Bells of St Mary's, Crosby was also the target of numerous death threats. One death threat Crosby received warned, Crosby, I want you to send me $6,000 right away. You will have to send me all of your money for what you did to me and what you tried to do. It's no secret that the soft-spoken star with the mellifluous voice had a dark, destructive side, a penchant for women, booze and gambling. At 16, he landed in jail on a drunk driving charge. But just how disturbing his behaviour truly was, 
has never been known until now. In the late 50s, the FBI learned that Crosby was hobnobbing with mobsters, including mob frontman Mo Dalitz, who he invited to go deer hunting. His passion for golf also led him into troublesome company. One of Crosby's golf partners was Jack Machine Gun McGurn, an alleged gunman in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Crosby just loved golf. He didn't care who he played it with. I stress that it was just very innocent. It was just to play golf, Crosby biographer J. Roger Osterholm said. Partly, it seems Crosby was a victim of the time and the place. One 1930s memo written by FBI agent Clyde Tolson says, An extremely serious situation exists in Hollywood, with all types and kinds of racketeers preying upon prominent persons in the motion picture industry. Tolson never speculated on who the racketeers were, but Bugsy Siegel, the mobster who built Las Vegas, and Frank Nitti, a henchman of Al Capone, are mentioned. Tolson revealed that Crosby had once coughed up $10,000 because of a threat hanging over him. Crosby's unholy friendships fit him like a glove. Crosby was so fond of gambling, he would eagerly track down illegal games to blow his millions. Crosby had everything one could dream of, but his failed marriages and turbulent private life would go on to tarnish some of his reputation. In 1930, Crosby married his first wife, actress and nightclub singer Wilma Wyatt, whose stage name was Dixie Lee. Bing and Dixie immediately became one of the hottest celebrity couples in the United States. Together they had four sons, Gary, twins Dennis and Philip, and Lindsay. On the surface everything looked normal, and Bing and Dixie created a stable home for their boys to grow up in, but behind the scenes, cracks were appearing in their whirlwind marriage. Later, he left two wives and seven kids for the high life and flings with co-stars like Grace Kelly and Rhonda Fleming. Among many other things, Crosby was the first to introduce crooning as an American singing style, something that made him a pioneer in the field of music. During his career, Crosby had countless hit songs. Many of them are still played on the radio today. Not to be forgotten in charting Bing Crosby's influence is the music itself. His song knowledge and sense of laid-back swing was learned from early jazz music, far less formal than the European-influenced classical and popular music used for inspiration by the vocalists of the 1910s and 20s. Jazz was by no means his main concentration though, especially after the 1930s. Crosby instead blended contemporary pop hits with the best songs from a wide range of material. His wide repertoire covered show tunes, film music, country and western songs, patriotic standards, religious hymns, holiday favourites and ethnic ballads, most notably Irish and Hawaiian. The breadth of material wasn't threatening to audiences because Crosby put his own indelible stamp on each song he recorded, appealing to many different people while still not endangering his own fan base. Crosby was among the first to actually read songs, making them his own by interpreting the lyrics and emphasising words or phrases as he thought best. His influence and importance in terms of vocal ability and the knowledge of American popular music are immense, but what made him a star more than anything else was his persona, whether it was an artificial creation or something utterly natural to his own personality. Crosby represented the American everyman, Strong and stern to a point, yet easy-going and affable, tolerant of other viewpoints, but quick to defend God and the American way. During the hard times of the Depression and World War II, when Americans most needed a symbol of what their country was all about. Crosby, whose movies and pop hits made him a multi-millionaire by the age of 35, died of a heart attack in 1977 at the age of 74. Ironically, he would perhaps have relished the thought of details of his double life emerging now. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Bing Crosby? He was a fanatic about the technology of sound, and in his heyday, millions worshipped Crosby's trademark bass baritone voice.